Okay then my friends, so now we are caching all these different static resources right here when our service worker gets installed over here and then in the future when we're offline or have little connection or even just making fetch requests when we're online we're intercepting those we're seeing if that request is stored in our cache and if it is we're returning that to the user so that's good and now we've enabled kind of like an offline mode as well for our app so we're moving along but there is a problem with this now then, what I'm going to do first of all to demo this problem is just come over here, make sure you have update on reload unchecked because I don't want this to interfere with what we're about to do. And if you were a user viewing this website, you're not going to have this checked and you're not going to have any kind of option check like this on a mobile app either. So uncheck that. Now what I'd like to do is go to index.html and in this recipes section, all I'm going to do is add in an H6. We're going to change this file basically. I'll give this a class of center to centrally align it and give this a title called recipes. So now we're changing our index.html file and if I come over here and then refresh, hmm, I do not see that change. So what's happening? Well, don't forget we're intercepting all of the different fetch requests right here. And when we reloaded the page, it sent out fetch requests for all the different assets we needed, including index.html. And that index.html is in our cache. And we're returning it right here. Now, when we actually cached that, it had the old content. This wasn't here. So what we're doing is now returning the old file that's in the cache because we've not recached this yet since we've changed it. And the reason we've not recached it yet is because we're caching assets inside the install event. And remember, the install event only fires when the service worker has changed. So if we change any of these assets over here that we want to cache, then to recache them, what we need to do is then change this file so that the install event refires. Now, the best way to do this is by changing the name of the cache right here. And we can do it by just adding something like hyphen v and then we'll just call it v1 for now and we'll version this so we'll have v1 v2 v3 every time we make a change to our files we can change this version and this is changing the service worker file so when i save it now and load it in the browser it's going to reinstall that service worker over here and then because we reinstall it it's going to fire all of this code which recaches all of the assets including the updated files that we have changed so let me save this now and come over here to the browser and notice that we have a new file now waiting to be active a new service worker and if we go to the console we can see we're caching the shell assets because we have that install event again it's recaching all of those shell assets now we don't see those in the page yet because the new service worker was installed but it's not yet active and because it's not yet active it's not doing all of this stuff where we're getting the up-to-date thing from the cache from this cache over here so if i save this now and go to application i'm going to skip waiting and then we're going to refresh and now do you think this is going to work do you think that it's now going to get it from this new cache that we created site static v1 over here because now we have all of the updated files in here well let's give this a refresh and find out and no we don't we don't see the updated one so what's going on here well when we're intercepting these fetch requests even though we have the new service worker active when it's looking to match this request inside our caches it doesn't know which cache to look in it could be v1 or this old one or v2 if we had one and it's going to find the index file in each one so it might not know which one to return okay does that make sense so we might not or we see the updated one here this isn't going to work so what we need to do is address this problem when we update our static files we update the version of our static cache name right here so that we're making a new cache and we're putting those updated files inside that new cache right and that's all fine but then what we want to do is actually delete the old cache because we don't need that anymore so then how are we going to delete the old cache version and where we're we going to delete the old cache version well first of all where we're going to do it in the activate event right here because at this point the new service worker has been activated and the new service worker is going to be intercepting the fetch right here 
So what we need to do now is delete all of the old cache from here. So how are we going to do that exactly? Well, first of all, I'm going to use event.wait until again, because again, we want to extend the life of this activate event. We don't want it to finish and then suddenly maybe stop the service worker because then whatever we're going to do inside it might not finish. So we're going to use wait until and in there we pass some kind of action that's asynchronous that returns a promise. Now what we're going to do is as follows. I'm going to say caches dot keys and let me just write this out first of all then I'll explain it and that returns a promise so I'm going to say dot then then we take the keys and fire a callback function and inside I'm going to console dot log the keys right here. So then what I'm doing is saying caches and then using a method called keys. Now this is an asynchronous method and it returns a promise and what this does is go to all of our caches and it looks for the keys and it gets those keys and takes them in into this callback function. Now what are the keys? Well we're logging them to the console right here so let me just save this, come over here and this shouldn't be in the console yet because we've not activated the new service worker. So let's go to application service workers, skip waiting and then refresh. And if we go to the console now, then we should see in a minute that we get the activate event. Oh no, we didn't because we activated it over here. So let me just do that again. I'm just going to make a little comment here just to make a change so we can reactivate it. And now what I'm going to do is skip waiting over here, which is going to fire the activate event. And over here, now we can see these different keys. So these keys are the names of the two different caches we now have. We can see those if we look inside the cache storage. We see site static and site static v1. So what this method does, this keys method right here, is return to us an array of keys that we have. And these are the two different cache names that we have now. Now what we want to do is delete any cache that is not this name because that means it's an old cache, right? So what we're going to do here is actually cycle through any caches we currently have in the browser. And when we're cycling through those, we're going to delete that cache if it's not this. Because in the future, we might have three or four caches that we want to delete. We're not just always deleting one cache, we might have more. So we need to cycle through them and check them. If that cache key is not equal to this, then we're going to delete that cache. Now, this is actually going to take several attempts to do because if we have several caches, then we're going to have to cycle through each one. And for each one, we're going to have to delete each one. OK, does that make sense? So what we need to do right here is say return and we're going to use promise dot all. Let me just write this, then explain it. Now inside here, we're going to take the keys and then we're going to use the filter method on this. So I'm going to say dot filter like so. And then I'm going to say inside key and we're going to be saying key not equal to the static cache name. And then I'm going to tack on a map method. Again, don't worry, I will explain this in a second. Again, take in the key and this time I'm going to say caches dot delete. OK, so what are we doing here? Well, remember, wait until expect a promise passed into it. Now, this returns a promise, right? But then inside of it, we need to do several different asynchronous tasks. We need to delete several old caches. At the minute, we're only going to be deleting one old cache but there could be several old caches in the future we want to delete and there will be in fact. So what we actually need to do is wait for each of those asynchronous tasks to be done. So if there's three caches we need to delete, then we need to delete each one, right? And each of those deletes for each cache is going to take some time to do. Each one is asynchronous and we essentially have a number of different promises returned to us, but this expects one promise returned to us. So what promise all does is take in an array of promises and then when each of those promises resolves, then this is going to resolve as well. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to pass in an array of promises to promise to all right here, right? And this array is going to be, first of all, the keys, which is just an array of the different keys of our caches. We have two in there at the minute. And what we're doing is filtering that array. 
and we're saying inside here, look, does the key of that cache, so that thing that we have over here, let me just see if it's still in the console, does this site static equal to this thing up here, right? So if it's not equal, if the key is not equal to the static cache name right here, this statement is going to return true. And if it returns true, then it keeps it in the new filtered array. So if the names are not equal, it stays in the array. And that makes sense because we want everything that we want to delete to stay in the array. If these things are equal, so if the key is equal to the static cache name that we have in the constant up at the top, then we actually want to remove it from the array. We filter it out of the array because we don't want to go to the next part with that and then delete that. That is the thing that we want to keep as our cache. So then once we have the leftover array of things that we want to delete, what we're doing is mapping that array to an array of promises. Because remember, promise to all expects us to pass in an array of promises. So we're taking each key in the new filtered array and for each one we're saying caches.delete and we need to pass in the key right here so this delete method takes this cache that we pass in the key which is going to be one of these things right here and it deletes that cache this is a promise it returns a promise it's asynchronous so now we're returning a new array of promises right and then when each one of those promises are resolved this is resolved, which we're then returning, which is a single promise. And that's what this expects right here, a single promise to be resolved. So now we're successfully deleting all of the old caches. This probably seems very complicated at first, but just run through this code again and see exactly what it's doing. When it's activated, we're getting the keys of all the caches. We're taking those keys and firing a callback function. Then we're using promise to all and we're taking in those keys. We're filtering this array of keys so that any key which is not equal to the static cache name up here remains in the array because they're the keys or the caches that we want to delete. So we have a new array right here of caches we want to delete. Then we're mapping through that array and mapping it to a new array because this expects an array of promises. So we're mapping through that array and we're taking the key in each position in that array of the cache that we want to delete. We're deleting that cache using the key and this returns a promise right here. So we're returning a promise for each position in this new array of caches that we want to delete. This array of promises are all going to get resolved when they're all resolved, promise to all resolves, and then we're finished with the wait until. I really hope that makes sense. So now, let me save this. What I'm going to do is come over to the browser and if we go to application, I'm going to go to skip waiting like so. Now you can see the old cache disappeared over here. It deleted it. It cycled through it. And because that cache name was not equal to the new static cache name up here, it deleted it. It worked. So now if I try to refresh, then we can see the updated page. Now it knows to get that new cached asset from this um, cache right here, and we get that new updated page. And now every time we do this, if I go to index.html again, I'm just gonna change the title to uh, Ninja Recipes and save it. And what I'm gonna do is go over to the service worker now we need to update this again, so I'll say V2 because we changed our site static assets that we're caching right here. I'm going to save that. Then over here, we can see if I go to the application service workers, I'm going to skip waiting to activate the new service worker. Then I can refresh and get the new cached asset. And we see now site static V2 over here, and we deleted the old one again. Okay, so I hope that all makes sense. This has probably been the most complex video so far, but once you get your head around this code and why we're deleting the old cache, it's all going to fall into place.